Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so happy to see everyone today and sending you all the well wishes during this uh, very unusual time that we're all experiencing. And we're just so happy that you're able to just take a few minutes to learn about our cannabis plant biology program today. I'm Nicole DeWillier Fenton with UVM's Continuing in Distance Education Department. And I have the absolute pleasure of having two of our folks um, for our plant biology, our cannabis plant biology course, joining us remotely. Um, we have Dr. Monique McHenry, who is the program director. And then we have Taylor Renio, who is also one of the program faculty. So we're super excited to hear from them today about the program. And both Monique and Taylor, I'll have you guys turn on your microphones because I will be uh, having you answer questions as soon as possible. As I mentioned, my name is Nicole. Here's a quick look at our agenda for today. Um, we're gonna talk to Dr. McHenry and Taylor. We're gonna get a quick overview of the course. Um, and you also may be aware that we have a cannabis science and medicine course. So we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the difference of those courses towards the end. But today we're focused on our um, professional certificate in cannabis plant biology. Um, we're also gonna hear from a student, um, not live with us today, but just a, a recent story that we've uh, shared uh, from a student's perspective who just finished this course as well. What's happening in the cannabis industry? That's a big question, um, and we're not gonna try to tackle it, but just the uh, evolving information in the cannabis industry and how that is um, relevant in the course and what uh, Dr. McHenry and Taylor um, incorporate into the course about the cannabis industry. This is always one of my favorite questions and topics with Dr. McHenry as well, is evidence-based cannabis education. We'll really dive into that because that is what makes unique UVM's programs unique as well. Um, and the types of roles and careers that tend to gravitate towards this course. We have a slide talking about that. Um, and then of course those logistics towards the end as the course is starting in just a few weeks. Um, as we've been chatting this morning, um, everybody looks like they're pretty comfortable in the chat box. I will be keeping an eye on that chat box to the best of my ability. So please do put your questions in there. I'll try to answer them and, and field them over to um, Monique and to Taylor throughout the presentation. And then we'll make sure that we have time at the end to also answer your questions. Um, so I'd like to first um, introduce uh, a little bit more detail the folks who are with us today. Dr. Monique McHenry is our director of our program for the Cannabis Science and Medicine and the Professional Certificate in the Cannabis Plant Biology. She's a botanist. We have the pleasure of having her in our Robert Larner College of Medicine in the pharmaceutical um, program as well. She's the director of the Medical Cannabis Center for Research and Education and the co-founder of the Case Institute, a plant-based pharmaceutical research enterprise. Monique, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, great, thank you. And Taylor's with us too. We're super excited. Taylor hasn't joined us yet on a webinar, so we're really pleased to have him and have his perspective as well. He's an instructor in the plant biology, the cannabis plant biology course, and a horticultural scientist with a background in controlled environment cannabis cultivation, and works really closely with our students. So we're really excited to hear your perspective. It's good to see you today, Taylor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. So let's, let's dive in. Um, Monique, I always love to start with you in terms of, let's set kind of that stage. Like, what is this program? Um, give us the overview of the um, professional certificate in cannabis plant biology. So the plant biology course is something we designed um, to provide a foundation in the scientific and technical background for students to be able to understand how cannabis is grown, how it's made into different therapeutic products today, and with that, we kind of hope that participants can use this information learned in the course to understand the different systems, processes, facilities, equipment, everything really needed to, to produce cannabis-based products from seed um, to sale. Mm -hmm. And there's so much in between that. Um, and so let's look a little bit um, about the structure of, the modules um, and the weeks, if you will. And I know for many folks, this might be your first online course. And so what we say with modules are the different learning opportunities by the different weeks um, in the course as the course goes on. So, you know, when Dr. McHenry refers to, you know, a module on hemp horticulture, um, those are different weeks of learnings as well. And so could you just walk us through some of the information we're seeing here in this slide? Monique, can you hear me? No, nope, we're not getting you. Um, you know what? I seem to be having a little bit of a problem with my internet connection. 
Um, but I think I know what you were asking. So can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Yeah, go for it. We can hear you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this question, then I'm gonna try to switch providers, and hopefully that helps. So, if I was gonna walk through through the um, professional certificate in plant biology, what we start with is just the basic um, history, law, policy, business, and then we start diving right into plant biology right away. Um, we go through the plant, its chemicals, the horticultural processes, post-harvesting, and then we do touch on uh, the effects that cannabis has on humans before we have the students then present their own work, and we finish with a career development module. So the last week is about the students and what they can do with this information they've just learned. Maybe, um, Taylor, are you hearing me okay? Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, we'll give uh, Monique a pause for a second since she's uh, having some internet challenges. Monique, if you can hear me, it might just be good to turn your camera off. That might just be drawing a little bit on the internet. Um, as much as we'd love to see you and hear you, let's try that. If you're hearing me, maybe turn your camera off and we can hopefully still hear you. Um, Taylor, why don't you walk us through a little bit um, as you've been helping with the instruction of this course, um, what are students doing in these different modules that we're seeing listed here? Sure. Um, so each week uh, there's different lectures provided from different content matter experts. Uh, we're really lucky to have a diverse set of experts in different fields uh, teaching different topics. And so it really provides students with a pretty robust and well-rounded um, experience and knowledge base. Um, a little bit of everything. It starts with, as you can see here, the history, uh, not just of the plant and its history evolutionarily and its domestication with humans, but also the history of the legal policy. Um, we have quite a bit of information on the plant biology, the plant chemicals, why this plant produces the chemicals it does. Um, hemp horticulture and, and agriculture um, are practice-based modules uh, where we really discuss um, how the plant is grown, uh, both indoors and outdoors, uh, with a specific emphasis in integrated pest management as one of our modules as well. Um, we certainly discuss how this plant is turned into a product, and as Dr. Mo, Dr. McHenry alluded to, um, we talk about once the product is made, how does it work with humans? Mm -hmm. I think um, I can add as well that um, at the end, it, it is a very valuable resource for students to have the extra module um, on career development, how to use the knowledge that you've learned to perhaps lend yourself a job in this emerging industry uh, and separate yourself from other individuals who might be applying for the same positions. Great. Yeah, thank you. Super useful. Um, and again, if folks have questions on the specific um, modules and learning, please do let us know. It looks like Monique is trying to come back in um, as well. So I always find this a great point to share with our prospective students. Um, hi, Monique, we see you. Um, is the student perspective, somebody who just went through the class. Um, and this is a woman, um, Charlotte. We are just putting a blog up this week um, with Charlotte's story uh, as it pertains to this class. But I wanted to share with you today some of what she has told us. She felt, she also has, um, she was coming into this class from the perspective of learning how to support growers. She works for um, an energy company and how does she, I think in, Seattle or somewhere out in the Pacific Northwest, um, how she can help to support some of the growers in her area and be more knowledgeable about some of the questions um, that they might be asking. And so this is how the program helped her. She had a better understanding of the life cycle of the cannabis plant, the impacts of external inputs, what energy solutions might be helpful for indoor growers, and the opportunity to learn from experts in the field like Taylor mentioned and build on connections in the cannabis industry. Um, you can see her quote here, I won't read it um, verbatim because you guys can take a look at that, but she really felt like the, the experts that were coming in were giving timely, relevant information as we know this industry evolves very quickly. Um, and so something you read a few weeks ago might not be relevant today. And so that was very helpful to have experts coming in and sharing their information as well. Um, 
and one of the things that I think is really important for folks to know about our classes is there's a absolute co cohort and community building in our online classes. Um, if this is new for you, if you've never taken an online class, um, likely there'll be a lot more of them. Uh, and so it's a real opportunity for you to um, learn how to be an online student. And we have a lot of tools on our website as well at learn.uvm.edu in the blog section about how to be a good online learner, successful online learner. Um, we also on our website at learn.uvm.edu under the student um, section, there's a lot of tutorials and videos about online learning so that you can really get up to speed quickly. Um, Taylor, what would you say would be some tips that you could offer people if this might be their first online learning? Um, how, how could they kind of get acclimated quickly into this type of platform? I think it's something that uh, the earlier you can do it, the better. Um, it, it's a environment where I think, as you alluded, in, in the next couple of months might be something that people have to do a lot more often. But even moving forward, um, I think that this particular class suits uh, or these programs suit people who are already working full time jobs. And so to gain a little bit more knowledge and things that will be useful to building a career, um, this is a really perfect platform for people to learn. Um, I, I think to really be open to the idea, um, to be patient as you may or may not um, have experience with it and may experience some technical difficulties in the beginning, uh, but that's what I'm here for. Uh, I certainly provide technical support to the students who are just learning uh, how to navigate these different platforms that we learn on, um, but it really, it becomes intuitive, um, and I, I think students will actually really enjoy the flexibility of the asynchronous learning environment where you can work at, at your own pace uh, within a, a weekly module set. Great. Thank you for that feedback. I really appreciate that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And if folks have questions about online learning specifically, we, we would, um, we'll try our best to answer those for you today too. Um, Monique, um, hopefully you can hear us okay. Monique, any luck? Can you hear us? Yes, I apologize. This rural Vermont internet is not super reliable and I have to remain rural for the next 12 days. So. It's okay. I think we're we're absolutely bearing with you. Do, don't worry about it. I'm sure many of us are experiencing similar challenges. Um, so let's just talk about for a second a little bit less. Um, oh, we lost her. <laughs> Taylor, you're going to be running the show today. I think. <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> Great. I'm glad you're here. Um, I think more than anything, the point that I was trying to make in this slide is that how quickly the industry changes. Um, and uh, Dr. McHenry and Taylor really talk about what is the state of the industry and how it pertains to um, cultivation and hemp production as well. Um, maybe when we get Monique back, we can talk a little bit more about evidence-based um, cannabis education. But from your perspective, Taylor, why do you think that evidence-based cannabis education, which is unique, again, to UVM's science and medicine cannabis programs and the plant biology, why do you think this is so important? I think it's really important, especially um, my perspective. I, I do come from the professional cannabis industry. Um, and so I understand there is a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and as this plant becomes more accepted and as we try to make professions out of um, things around this plant, it's going to be important that we can distinguish between what is fact and what is fiction. Um, one thing that I do here at the university in my research is really try to demystify a lot of things. Uh, there is a lot of mythical information, a lot of um, misinformation uh, that is spread. And I think that's really what's important about this course is providing evidence-based peer-reviewed published publications um, are really truly concrete evidence that uh, are provided from real scientists across the globe. And that is what we can rely on to um, really move the industry forward and move the knowledge base on this plant forward um, are publications that have been provided from different universities, different experts, different scientists that other scientists have then reviewed and deemed acceptable uh, good science and not just maybe someone's anecdotal or opinionated response from um, you know, a trial on their own. Great. Yeah, I think that's so important. Thank you for sharing that perspective. I do see a couple um, questions coming in and we'll get back to those in just a second. 
And so I find, I, I'm glad you mentioned as well that you come from the professional cannabis industry side. And so I think we have seen just a really variety of folks in their positions coming into this particular course, the cannabis plant biology, as well as the cannabis science and medicine. Um, and do you want to touch on, since you interact so much with the students, do you want to maybe touch on um, the various different types of positions and roles that you have seen thus far? Um, and is that reflected here in our slide as well? Sure. I, I think that our slide is pretty comprehensive and um, there is a really diverse set of students. So um, we really can't even encompass it in just one slide. Um, but there is a, a variety of scientific backgrounds um, and agricultural backgrounds that come to take this course. Um, and to kind of apply their existing knowledge or their existing skill set to um, a specific study area that is really in demand right now in a emerging industry. Um, so we've seen everyone from students who are currently studying different science topics to uh, pharmacists and biologists, chemists, biochemists, biochemists, different individuals who have different experiences um, with a different range of time that they've been doing these jobs, but um, they may be able to apply their current skill set, their current knowledge to a particular topic that will then allow them to transition more easily into the industry. Yeah, great. And we've definitely seen um, a lot of healthcare providers um, from a knowledge perspective. Maybe they're not intending on, on um, cultivating and growing and going in that direction of their career, but just from the understanding of the plant. Um, and the biology of the plant, we've seen a lot of healthcare um, providers wanting to um, just educate themselves on that and just be more well informed for their patients. Would you say that that's true as well? I would, yeah. Um, being a plant based medicine, um, there are inherent variables that you need to understand the plant to understand, um, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. it's, it's not just a lab created medicine, it is something that comes with. Uh, different variables of mother nature really and things that we can control um, but to really understand how this plant works with the body and to be able to prescribe it for certain conditions you need to understand how the product was made great point absolutely thank you um, for sharing that information with us okay let's see what else we're let's talk about some of those course logistics as well because i hope this might answer um, tom's question um, we do have a few requirements for the course, um, completed college level foundational science courses in biology and chemistry, 18 years of age or older, bachelor degree. And I know we get this question a decent amount and Tom has addressed it. Um, commenting on the prerequisites, um, Tom says, I have not delved into a college level lab in quite some time. You're not alone. Uh, and I was not a bio or chem major. I think we've seen lots of folks that that, that has been their circumstance as well. And um, Taylor, I'd love your opinion. I have heard Monique, Dr. McHenry say several times, um, get in touch with us. Um, let's talk about that. Y you, you will still need to do the work in terms of being able to understand the biology and the chemical chemistry that's going on related to the teachings for the plant biology. But don't make that, that lack of prerequisite um, not have you apply. Would, would you say that that's the way that she really has approached it in the past? I would, yeah. I mean, some of the topics can be more challenging for others, uh, especially when we get into the nitty gritty science of the chemistry for the extraction or really the biochemistry of how it works in the body. We don't, we don't all have a medical background. We can't all talk about how the liver metabolizes cannabis byproducts. Um, but being able to just understand the basics of what is being presented, to comprehend it, to absorb it, um, will put you in a better place than other people that are trying to enter the industry. Um, and really that's what the, this course is about, is understanding the material. Um, and maybe not everything is something that everyone will understand, um, but you can at least get the, uh, you know, the general idea of, of some of these processes. And it, not everyone comes into this course with a really hard science background. Uh, and I don't believe that you need to. Great. Yeah. And that's usually, um, Tom, that's what Dr. McHenry has said in the past. Um, please do get in touch, uh, apply, consider this, and then um, likely Taylor will be helping and working with you. You need to put in the work as well, um, but don't have that to prevent you from considering applying. Um, oh, Linda just asked if we can get a copy of the program. Yes. Um, and I see that Kelly, who helps in our chat box, has answered that. So yes, we do 
um, record this and we will share it out afterwards. Um, in addition, Paul says, um, you mentioned career. Can you provide a career viability forecast? That's a tough one, but um, how long into the future will this certificate prove to be of value? Oh my goodness, I would love to see that crystal ball if we have it. Um, so I, I would love, Taylor, your perspective on this because um, I was actually involved in that career module as well with you guys, and it, it helps to set up um, the variety of different opportunities that there are, the ways that you can connect and, and get into this industry or grow your career in this industry, a lot of tools and resources to be able to do that. But one of the things that this also does, um, as do many of our online courses here at the University of Vermont, is create a network. Um, not only are you able to network with each other in the course and potentially learn of career opportunities in your course and your class network, but also networking with the experts um, and the guest speakers as well, and with Taylor and Monique, um, who are connected to the industry. Do you have any other thoughts on just how this can help build someone's career opportunities um, with the certificate? Yeah, I think as time goes on, uh, the industry will become more competitive. I know that a lot of people are interested in working in it. Um, and in time, you will need more mm, certifications or more of a background to make yourself stand out in this industry. And I think as the industry becomes a bit more structured, there will be specific roles rather uh, than more open-ended, wear a lot of hat roles in a lot of these companies that um, having some sort of specialization is really valuable and valuable not just to yourself uh, for job security, but value, valuable to a potential employer. So I think as time goes on, this certificate will perhaps hold more weight. Um, and I, I think something that I've always been told is getting a degree, getting a certificate is something that someone can't take from you. Um, so you have it. So this is Monique here. I'm just gonna jump on in. I'm, I'm not gonna put the video feed on. I think the internet's too weak, all three of my providers right now. Um, but I wanted to add to what Taylor said and uh, emphasize that it's just another tool really to have in your tool belt. So, you know, you're, you're going to also, yes, you will graduate with a certificate, which could be powerful when seeking jobs. But a lot of people that enter the program are already in the industry and they just don't have this broad depth of knowledge. So, you know, we provide a lot of a lot of different uh knowledge gaps where and we have experts in in their respective fields coming in with that information so if you're already in the industry um, you'll just have more of a uh, broad and um, comprehensive education in many aspects that influence uh, cannabis industry great point thank you and i'm so glad that you're back with us um, Winnie, can you touch on, um, just because I know we always get this question and we were answering it for Tom, but I also see um, Paul was asking a few um, similar questions as well, um, and Brenda, related to um, the science prerequisite courses. Um, and, and Taylor did a wonderful job sharing his perspective on that, but what is, what is your thoughts on um, whether that is a true requirement that someone has to have a... Right, uh, so I heard that the... the I heard the tail end of Taylor's answer, and I agree, you know, it's not completely necessary, but if, if you come in without that science background, we are going to ask that you just put in the extra effort, you know, this is all for you to learn as much as you can. And there might be additional um, references that you might have to look up in order to understand all of the pharmacology or the plant genetics. So without that basic science background, you might just have to do a little bit more catch up work. Um, and you can do that while you're taking each module. Um, but really, you know, it's, it's, it's the amount of time you want to put in. So coming in without a science background, you just might have to put in a little bit more time, but you'll probably get a lot out of it. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. We do have a few other questions coming in. Um, Paul's asking about, are there focus areas in the curriculum for marijuana versus industrial hemp? So this course is mostly industrial hemp. Um, when we're talking about horticulture in the field, we're talking about the industrial hemp horticulture, we do. Um, Taylor does bring in some marijuana um, horticulture knowledge in his controlled environment section. Um, but most of what we focus on for post-production and processing is, is hemp. But with that said, you know, they are the same species, hemp and marijuana, and we are talking about them at the level of a plant. So you can apply it to marijuana. Um, you know, 
the university is is this is an industrial hemp course but since they're the same species and have many of the same techniques you can apply it to whichever crop you would be growing thank you um it looks like brenda does have a follow-up question and brenda maybe we could um uh, Kelly can put up our email address as well, and because we'd love to talk to you a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. um, Brenda's asking, do, does she have to have a degree, a bachelor's degree? Um, and Monique, I don't know if that's a straight yes or no answer, or if we want to maybe talk a little bit more with Brenda one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, we, we usually consider everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and honestly, I don't think we're going to try to convince somebody to not take the course if they really want to. Um, so to answer the emphasis on have since it's capitalized, I would say you don't have to have anything, but you have to be willing to put the time in so that you can get to the level of understanding that you'll be able to understand the material in the course. Great. Thank you. I'm glad you asked that, Brenda. Thank you. I don't think we'd had that question um, about the bachelor's degree, but lots of questions usually around this, um, the chemistry and the biology courses. Um, I want to come back to a little bit. We've got a few more questions, um, and as I'm looking down, I'm trying to catch your questions here. Um, so we, those were the questions that we talked about. And so Jay was asking, I love this question too, because we have the Cannabis Science and Medicine um, Certificate Program as well, and um, we have done several webinars uh, with Dr. McHenry talking about the two of those different courses. Um, and Jay's kind of looking at... Um, you know, which one and in order and various different things. And there is um, a question in here um, about the discount, but we'll we'll address that in just a minute. And maybe Kelly can share some information about that or we can get back to you, Jay, specifically. But um, Monique, could you share with us um, the difference between those two? And if you have a recommendation, um, which one you would take first? Sure, we get this question every time, don't we, Nicole? And that's a great question, so thank you for asking. Um, I mean, we've designed, you know, both courses that they would cover the basics, history, business, law, and policy. So there will be um, some similar information in, in all those areas. And then both do include a basic pharmacology and a basic plant biology. Um, now the science and medicine course then goes into depth about how cannabis would affect the human body, while the plant biology goes into depth about what factors affect the plant. So for example, um, changing the way it grows and the chemicals it produces versus uh, going into clinical evidence for specific treatments like we do in the cannabis science and uh, medicine course. So the second part of your question is, can students take both? The answer is yes, but you have to realize, you know, those first few modules will seem somewhat repetitive. There'll be a lot of shared information. Um, so there is overlap. So our suggestion has kind of been that we would start with plant biology and for a student that's looking to take both. And after completing the course, if they want to know more information about how cannabis affects the human body, they could uh, actually take some of those clinical modules um, on an a la carte uh, scenario. So we do offer them, and you don't take it with a cohort, but you can still utilize the material um, and access it just individually. So if you wanted to learn more about uh, cannabis and pain, we have a module on that. If you want to learn more about cannabis and motor disorders, we have a module on that. So you can do it that way to spe you know, specifically answer your question. We, with that said, we have had students take both simultaneously. And uh, these individuals were medical professionals. So they came with a medical background and just wanted to learn more about plant biology. So they didn't want to take that first. They, they really wanted to concentrate on the medical field. And, and they did really well in the course. And you know they were the star students in both sections. Um, I think they had a lot of time to dedicate because remember each module requires you know upwards of 10 hours a week. So if you're doing two without material overlap, that's about 20 hours a week. So for a retiree or you know somebody who might be looking for something to do for the next six to eight weeks, they could take both, but there will be overlap. That's a great um, segue as well. Let's talk about what that means, um, asynchronous courses and the modules. Um, because for many folks, this might be their first online course. And this is a great introduction into online learning. Um, walk us through, um, Dr. McHenry, just the courses open up on what day and kind of the, the flow of what a typical week looks like in um, our plant biology course. Sure, so the course opens every Friday um, well, each the course opens, you know, for the a week beforehand, but each individual module opens on the Friday before it actually starts. 
So modules officially start Monday at 9 a.m. and they run through the following Sunday at midnight, basically. And we open them up the weekend before so that each module you would essentially have two weekends to work on if you, if you need to, if you're you know, busy during business hours, Monday through Friday. And um, depending on the module, there's either a asynchronous, so you can do it at any time you want. There would be a due date. Um, usually, you know, the final due date for it is Sunday at midnight. It doesn't mean you need to hand it in at Sunday at midnight, just before then. And then there is um, a, a synchronous component. So every other week we have a synchronous component where we're all meeting, um, not in Adobe Connect, in Zoom, um, a little bit more maybe user-friendly um, uh, uh, platform that, uh, and we share, we, we bring in an expert that sometimes associated with the course and sometimes hasn't presented any kind of presentation in the course. And for an hour, we answer questions and we have a little discussion and that is recorded and you're not required to attend. So if it doesn't fall within your work schedule, you can listen to that at a later date. So everything can possibly done asynchronously. We do offer every other week one synchronous session and students really like that session because it gives them a good chance to network. Great. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective as to what it would be like um, to be in the course with us. Um, and so I just moved off that slide. I didn't mean to because um, I wanted to um, let you remind everybody that this particular course at Cannabis Plant Biology starts in well, two weeks, um, the 30th, um, March 30th, and we have limited space. And so if this is something you're interested in, we highly recommend that you jump on the website and put your name in the hat to join into the class because there's limited space and it will fill. I did also want to share, because we have been talking a lot about the cannabis science and medicine as well, uh, that starts on April 6th. So if you are thinking of um, using both, taking both courses, how do you line up that learning, um, just thinking about the dates as to when both of those start as well. Um, I'd love to just pause for a second. I know we've had a lot of great questions today. And Taylor, thank you for jumping in and answering some of those questions as well. And Kelly, who's also on our team too. Um, I'd love to just come back to Taylor for a second while just keeping an eye out for those last questions. Taylor, what do, you, what do you really think that students can get out of this course, especially coming from your perspective of being in the professional um, cannabis industry? What do you see as the value here in this course for these prospective students? I think the, the biggest thing that I take with me and that I think a lot of students take with them is debunking uh, a lot of the misinformation that's out there. Um, and separating yourself and being able to leverage yourself on um, concrete knowledge that cannot be disputed is, is pure reviewed evidence-based information that is fact, um, as opposed to a lot of the anecdotal or opinionated information that is spread throughout the industry. Um, so having those tools are, are very valuable to um, establish, establish yourself as a knowledgeable in, individual in the field. Um, I think it really does set up students to um, either excel in their current position in the industry or enter the industry um, with a unique set of skills that they can um, adapt from their current position, wh whatever topic they may be doing, whether or not it is involved or related whatsoever. Um, it it is, a, is a good transition or a good booster for someone who's already in the industry. Great, thank you for that perspective. Dr. McHenry, your thoughts on this as well? I know that you obviously are involved in both of the courses, the cannabis courses, but what, what kind of gets you excited about the learning opportunities in the cannabis plant biology course? So in the plant, cannabis plant biology course, um, I mean, you know, it's our, it's our new, newly offered course. It will be our second time offering it this round. And I just think that the topics are so relevant to what's going on right now in um, the hemp industry and the larger cannabis industry as a whole. It's, you know, there's so many challenges right now where labels are inaccurate, you know, 50 to 80% is the reports we find. Sometimes, you know, some of the popular press is reporting 100% inaccuracy on labels. And, you know, we, we get to those points and we get to what would be affecting label accuracy. What do we know? We've compiled all of the evidence on storage temperature, storage methodologies, harvesting, and then during the actual growing cycle, what affects the plant's chemical amounts. So it just gets me excited that, that we have this knowledge that we've compiled for people 
and um, we're providing it and hopefully it helps the industry um, better itself because without the oversight of the federal government, we really haven't had anyone um, to have to set a bar. And so, you know, we're hoping we provide tools so that people can use this knowledge and um, do the best thing they can to uh, perform best practices in both agriculture, post-harvest, and processing. Great, thank you. Thank you both for joining us today. Monique, thank you for keep trying to come back in to the presentation. We really appreciate your perseverance. Um, and Taylor, thanks for just jumping in as well. Um, and thank you everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate all of your questions. I, I know I may have missed a, a question, so if there's something in particular that you wanted us to follow up on, please do um, email us the deadline for registration. Ideally, Mike's asking deadline for registration. Ideally, it's about a week before, um, but we won't say no if you are trying to register the, the day before. Um, the course, which starts on March 30th. So, but as I mentioned earlier, it does fill. And so we really would encourage you that if this is something you're interested in to um, put your name and get registered so that you can secure that spot. Um, and I think that's it for questions today. Thank you guys so much for being with us, everybody on the um, webinar participation today. And Dr. McHenry and Taylor, I thank you both and hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Take care. Thank you, thanks, Nicole. Nicole, and thanks for everyone participating.